Catania City, here we come. Mount Etna looms over Catania, Sicily's second largest city. It's said to have been covered by lava at least 17 times. One look at the ashy color of the streets and the buildings here, and you'll see that Etna is everywhere. Our Sicilian adventure begins in the east. Mount Etna is the largest active volcano in Europe and helps to produce some of Sicily's most sought after wines. Monique, welcome again in Sicily. Oh, ciao, ciao. So right now, you know, we are on the east side of Sicily. Mm -hmm. We claim a mountain. We are on the Etna volcano. I have to show you the tracer of this volcano, our Prophyloxera vineyard. Please follow me. Yes, sir. So I'm sure you know uh, what happened when Philoxera arrived in Europe. They completely destroy all the vineyards in the whole Europe, France, Portugal, Spain, and then Italy. But when I arrived on the Etna Volcano, Philosera found two things. The first uh, is the volcanic sand. It's a very, very thin sand and make not possible for this insect to spread. And the second is the altitude. So here we have uh, uh, vines that are more or less with uh, 150 years old and were planted before the arrival of the philosopher in Europe and obviously they are completely rootstockless. So uh, we are very very proud here because uh, we are continue to grow this kind of vines for history and because it's, a, it's an, an heritage. So please enter with me, I have to show you this vineyard. You first please. I can't wait to see it, wow. What are some of the characteristics that they would know? Like, hey, this wine is definitely from Etna. Wines from the Etna, thanks to the soil and thanks to the climate, are very, very elegant, but they are at the same time very powerful. So the consumer will enjoy this uh, elegant in the mouth, but is this complexity in the mouth and uh, the complexity of flavor and uh, at, at nose. Yeah, we can definitely feel it from the sun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very strong. Yeah. yeah, and which grapes are growing right there in front of us or in this vineyard? What grapes do we uh, have? What variety? We grow here all the autochthonous vines that are endemic on the volcano. So Nerello Mascalese and Nerello Cappuccio for red and Caricante, Catarratto and Minnella for white grape. Why do you think people in the United States are so excited about wines from Etna? We are uh, making uh, a viticulture on a mountain, but uh, at very low latitude. Let's go directly from the barrel. Okay. This is a Nerello Mascalese, 90%, and a little part of Nerello Cappuccio, directly from the Prefilox Ravignard, more than 100 years old, medium age, for you. Oh my gosh. Oh, now I'm too scared to try it. No, no. <laughs> and when does this wine go on the market? Because it's not available yet, correct? Yes, right now for this vintage, uh, we are going to put in the market for the April of uh, 2018. We have uh, the previous vintage that is still in bottle, in aging in bottle. Right now, this is the vintage 2015 and is yet in barrel aging. And what made you decide to do this, to make this wine? Uh, it's a, let's say that uh, this wine is a tribute to the Etna tradition of winemaking and vine growing. So it's really important. It's our heritage, this wine. We'll raise our glass to Etna. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. How cool is this? We're trying wines from Etna in this historic room where they first started pressing wine back in the 1500s. Absolutely. So uh, we're going to start with uh, this wine. It's called Le Sabbie dell'Etna. And the translation for the consumer of the label is the Etna's sand. Because uh, as I told you, as uh, we show you, the Etna soil is, uh, has uh, this very, very thin sand that characterizes the wine. We can say that uh, on the Etna, uh, the, all the producers were using this kind of press. But right now we have to, we have to introduce uh, technology, uh, but without uh, uh, erasing the tradition. The first thing about this Etna wine is the color. It's 
very, it's red, but it's uh, very brilliant. And this is what characterizes uh, the Nerello Mascalese, from Nerello Mascalese. At nose, uh, you can feel that it's uh, very fresh, uh, complex, and it's really elegant. You can see the, uh, the red fruits uh, and uh, some, uh, some part of, uh, of skin of lemon, of orange, uh, but remain really, really elegant. In your mouth, you, you will feel a very good uh, tannin texture that makes the wine uh, with a good body, but remains elegant and is very, very long lasting. Consumer. Yeah, just open up a bottle and you're transported to Etna, right? Sure. <laughs> Cheers. Travelers from around the world come here to Terramina to soak up the sun and get a taste of the Sicilian sweet life. Jasmine Zibibo, please. Zibibo is a, an aromatic vine. At nose, uh, you can feel the aromas of Zibibo. Uh, so you can feel the, uh, the skin of the orange, uh, peach, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, really, really aromatic and interesting aromas. A toast. A toast to Zibibo. To Zibibo. Tonno rosso di Favignana su una panur croccante di quinoa, zucchine e salsa all'arancia. Buon appetito. Grazie. Le sabbie rosse dell'Etna, Etna rosso. So, Monique, now we are testing a red wine with a fish. Looks like a little bit particular, because, uh, but it's no. So particular because uh, red tuna is considered red meat. Okay. It is. Yeah. I did not and, know this. And uh, this red wine comes from the Etna Vulcano, and as I told you, it's uh, more than 90% of Nerello Mascalese and a little part of Nerello Cappuccio. No, Nerello Mascalese is well known because its tannins are so roundy and so elegant. So again, uh, I think, by my opinion, that it's a perfect pairing with red tuna. So everyone's welcome to come to your uh, resort, and we're all going to come, and they're going to look for you, and they're going to sit down and do a food and wine pairing with you, right? You'll give them all this good info. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot think of a better way to end our day than with a taste and a toast to Fidiata Winery's number one wine in the U.S., Nero Diavola. I'll drink to that. <laughs>